Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel, and in this video, I'm going to try for the first time ever spraying on silicon render. Now, I've done it by trowel, I did take on what I consider to be quite a large job for me on my own, foolishly, and uh, it didn't really work out for me because I got a dry joint there. So it's bugging me. So the guys at EWI Pro said, why don't you try spraying, you numpty? So here I am, <laughs> I'm back with the expert here, Paul, and he has sprayed for a long time, haven't you, Paul? Uh, over 10 years with over this type years. of this machine. Okay, right, so he knows a bit more about it than I do, so he's gonna guide me through it, but he's gonna let me do the work because uh, you don't like working, do you? No, 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 no. <laughs> So one of the things with spray equipment is you've got to clean it, you know, and nobody likes cleaning it. So they've got a clever trick here. They line the hopper with a bit of plastic. That saves a bit of cleaning, but there's still a bit more to do, which we'll show you in the end. We're going to put the mix into the hopper and we've got the silicon render from EWI's store. Now, when you get this, it's basically a lot of minerals, if you like, grains, one and a half mil this is, and it's suspended in a silicon paint, if you like. Uh, but it settles, obviously. So what you've got to do is you've got to get the good old mix. Five minutes of mixing, at least five minutes of mixing with a, a, a power whisk to get it all the solids back into suspension, if you like. Then stick it in the machine. Now you said to me, don't scrape out the tub. What's the point? Um, there is a danger if it's been stored in the sun around the outside, it forms a bit of a crust. I know that one. Yeah, yeah and if you put that crust in the machine, it will block up the nozzle and you'll be forever cleaning it out. This nozzle, by the way, are just like, these are one and a half mil grains, aren't they? So doesn't that tend to block them anyway? No, not at all. Really? Because it's a compressor. This isn't an airless spray. This no, is a no, proper, this is, uh, proper yeah. pro machine. So people can buy these. Uh, they can't hire them from you, but they can hire them from other places, I guess. Yeah, they can hire them from CES Hire. Okay, all right. So if, it, if you're just learning, but quite honestly, having done it by trowel, if this works, I ain't never going back to that. I'm just going to spray all day long. I find the best way of um, sending the material through the pipe is on low speed. Yeah. But it's most important that you watch the pressure gauge. The pressure gauge will tell you if you've got a blockage. Oh, okay. So what happens? The pressure gauge goes up to what? Uh, 10 bar. 10 bar, blimey. Yeah. So, so what's that running at operating At the pressure? moment, naught, which is good. No. No, but what would it normally just go runs out that I'll break two bar. Yeah. Okay. Maximum. Yeah. So basically with this spray plant, you've got to have, first of all, a transformer, five KVA or yes. yeah, biggie. Then you've got to have a compressor. Yes. And then you've got to have the spray plant itself. Yes. And the hoses. And the hoses, yeah. Yeah. Comes standard with an eight meter, but you can put an extra 10 meter on to give you that little bit more distance. As you can see, we're going to be running two pipes today. So what we do first is get it through on the first pipe, because if you're ever going to get a blockage, it's normally at the knuckle. There we go, we've got the first bit through. Now you will have noticed it's a very sunny day today and it's due to get quite warm. So I wouldn't even attempt doing this on a trowel on a day like today, and it's windy as well, but apparently, when you're spraying, doesn't matter because even if you decided that you wanted to put a day joint, you've had enough, the next day you could go back and just blow it in. So it's very forgiving in that way, which uh, obviously doing it with a trowel, even when you've got two or three people, is hard work in the warm weather. So what I've done here is I've reversed the machine to just to take the pressure out of the pipe. So when I clean the end, I've not got uh, product continually coming out so I can fit the gun neatly. So when you say the end, you're going to clean this end? Yes. What with, water? Just a bit of water, yeah. Okay. Just to explain to you about spraying. Yeah. Uh, it's most important that this is your on-off switch now. Yeah. So that's in the off position. All oh, right. That's the open position. That's your on position. Okay. But it's important that it goes all the way. Don't oh, okay. Measures, ah. All the way. Oh, really? And then when you want to shut off, it's all the way. When you're spraying, you always start off in a bucket, okay. right? Because your first bit that will come out will be a splat. Got it, okay. You don't want a splat on the wall because no. you want a nice even texture. Yeah. Same again, when you're finished and you want to shut off, it's into a bucket. Yeah. Yeah, so you haven't got that splat. Yeah, I'm quite nervous actually. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Don't be nervous, they're uh. so simple to use. 
Right, so I'm going to start it off. You just want to step back a little bit. Right, I must also add, very important to have safety glasses on. Yeah, absolutely. Because you do get stones blowing back. Okay. So it's and keep all the way on, bring it to the wall. You want to be... Away from the wall. Okay. And that's a circular motion you're doing there. Yeah, I do Olympic rings. Do you? Ah. Yeah. When I'm doing up to a reveal, I'm spraying past the reveal. Got because it. Because if you stop there, you get a heavy build up. I know, yeah, yeah. You want a nice even coat across. Yeah. So always go past your bead. Okay. Right, I'm just going to sprinkle that with a second coat. I would, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, you'll, you'll see the effect. Okay, so I'm going to open up into the bucket, introduce it to the wall, and if you notice my second coat, I'm slightly further back. Okay. Because I always move on to the light coating. Yeah. So you keep it moving all the time, all do you? All the time, keep it moving. Okay. I can feel those little stones coming back. Just ticking back, yeah. Yeah. It's odd, odd enough, it's not the paint, is it? No. It's only the stones. That's lovely. It's like you've done that before, my friend. <laughs> Whoa, it's hard. Because you protect those windows, start to pop on there. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Now I've got to go again. Uh, if this was scaffolded out, I'd be turning onto the scaffold. Yeah, yeah. They love you, the scaffolders, then, don't they? Uh, sweet shot. You're trying to do two bigger rings. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, dude. Yeah, yeah, I will. Cheers. I'll get there. By the end of the day, I'll be a quarter decent. <laughs> okay, my friend. Do you know, I spent ages putting this polythene down and masking up to stop any stains on this deck. In actual fact, it's dry. So as long as you don't wet it and it doesn't rain, then it's not so bad. I mean, I'm not saying don't cover up because I think you should still mask everything up. It saves a lot of work, but it's actually a lot more forgiving than I thought. I keep using that same word, forgiving, but it is forgiving. And I think I've also been forgiven now for my little error up there because now we've sprayed it all over. You can't even see where the join is. So I'm very happy with it. And if I have to do another job, I'm definitely gonna spray. So if you've got some tired or shabby looking render, maybe it's got a few patches in it, you want to give it a facelift without hacking it off, then I definitely recommend using the silicone render sprayed on or troweled on. And if you want more information on any of these products or anything to do with external wall insulation, then get in touch with the EWI store. They've got loads on their website telling you about all the products, how to use them, and if you don't see the information you want there, they've got technical people to help you.
Now the scaffold's been removed, you get a clearer idea of the overall look of the building. And I think you can see that it's really smart hit up no end. But there is just one final little touch, and that is to put a mosaic render around the bottom, around the plinth, just below the damp proof course. So if you're using this system, it's always a good idea to stop it at the damp proof course. And EWI Pro do recommend that below that you use the mosaic. The mosaic is completely impervious to moisture and it's very similar to a resin bonded drive. Instead of using a polyurethane resin, they use an acrylic resin. Now, I've never done this before either, so let's see how I get on. Because I've never done this before, Paul Christmas, that is his real name, from EWI Pro Academy, he's the training guy, uh, he's going to give me a quick demonstration on how to do it and then he's going to leave me alone. I just say this at this point, if you're going to do any of this kind of work, it's well worth signing up for a course at the EWI Pro Academy. They've got one down in Aylesbury, they've got another one up in Bradford, so you can go to those academies and you can get some hands-on experience and learn all the theory. So with this, it's slightly different to the, make, to the uh, silicon render. We're applying it still to the thickness of the stones that are in it, mm -hmm. but we're not then going to texture it, we're just trailing it flat. So, so we don't have to rub it up no, with a little plastic float? No, we're just going to trail it flat so that all the stones are touching. Oh, okay. Uh, because where this has gone all nice and white and milky, yeah. that dries clear. Oh, okay. So all that's left is the coloured stones. Got it. As long as the stones are touching, that's all we need. So the, the, the idea, I put that primer on yesterday. Yep which is an acrylic primer mm -hmm. and uh, you recommended that I had that tinted the same colour as this so that yeah. if there is anywhere where yeah. we Any miss it. Any slight gaps in the stone won't show so much. I find it's best to use a small flexi trowel because it oh, doesn't okay. drag the stones, it will flatten them. Nice. And you can get those from EWI store? You can. All we're trying to do is make sure it's flat and there's no gaps in the stones. That's great. Um, there's no advantage in leaving it to go off slightly and then going back on it. Just do it as you go, yeah? I just do it as I go because yeah. um, you can, as it starts to dry, that resin becomes sticky. quite sticky and you can oh, drag the stones. Yeah. That's all. So this has actually got uh, uh, stones in it. There's no actual colour. No. It's other than the stone itself. Coloured, yeah. coloured quartz chippings in a acrylic binder okay an acrylic resin binder so that where it goes with white and milky like that that will all dry clear and just oh, leave the okay. coloured stones Got it. so it will dry slightly darker than that So that's the little skirt completed. It was a fairly quick and easy job to do. All I'd say, one thing is the masking tape. Pull it off while the coating is still wet because if you leave it to dry, it does start to try and pull away and you get a ragged top. So it's like a lot of other things. Pull the masking tape as soon as you can, as soon as you're done and you'll be fine. Now, the great thing about this little mosaic render, if you like, is that if there's a splash up, which there will be from the deck, rather than it staining the bottom of the render and 
you're getting that horrible green you know algae there it will because it's waterproof it'll just shed it and uh, it looks smart for a lot longer <laughs>